Thank you all for having me. They said I could talk for three to five minutes. I could probably do this for an hour. Um, I don't know if it's been mentioned uh, to Feek and I in a small group, a small group of Catholic lawmakers just spent uh, a couple of days uh, outside of Rome. And we've done it four or five years in a row, and I want to tell you a story about it because it's very powerful stuff and the type of message that needs to get out into the public. Um, by the way, it's a small private group. It's not, it's not sponsored by Congress. There's only four or five members of Congress. The group is predominantly African and Latin American, uh, folks from all over the world. Three years ago, we had the head of the Maronite Rite, I think it was, come to us and speak at dinner. Um, and the first thing he said out during that first evening was, whatever you do, don't make it easier for us to emigrate. Don't make it easier for us to leave, because it's exactly what the terrorists want. They want to cleanse. Um, in a very genocidal kind of way, um, this area of Christians and Jews. And it reminded us, rightly so, that the Christians and Jews are actually the indigenous people. They were there before the, the Muslims were. Um, and he said, we don't want to leave, so don't let us leave. I was, okay. The very next year, the same um, patriarch was our keynote speaker at the opening dinner. Um, got down on his knees uh, at the outset of the, be at the, uh, the beginning of the conference and said, I know what I told you last year. Um, now I'm telling you, do whatever you can to get us out, because they will kill every single last one of us. Um, and he told the story about the uh, collection process for the tax. I cannot remember the name of the tax under Sharia law. Um, yeah. And, um, and that uh, the uh, ISIS now would go into the Christian quarters, into the Nazarene-marked houses, and you know, essentially say, hi, we're here from ISIS to collect the tax. We know the tax was $5 last year. Now it's 100000 um, alternatively, we're empowered to accept your oldest daughter uh, in payment of the tax. And I think we can imagine what would happen to that young woman if, uh, if that was done. Never done, obviously. Then say, well, of course, the law is since you can't, can't pay the tax. The rules are pretty simple. You can either typically emigrate, convert, or die. Emigrate, not really an, uh, an option now because we're at war, so that leaves us convert or die. Would you like to convert? And when the father says no, they shoot the youngest child in front of him. They ask him again, and they move through the family systematically, shooting every member of the family, and then they move on to the next house. Uh, th those are the types of stories that you don't get in the Western press. Those are the types of stories that, quite frankly, are probably too graphic and too hard for the American public to even grasp. I remember talking to one of the patriarchs this year, we just got back, and he said, we are, this, is, this is the way Christianity started. He said, you Westerners are, 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 are spoiled that the, the donation of, uh, of Milan, that the, the, um, Constantine's decree um, that you were the official religion of the empire made it easy for you, it ended persecution. And you've effectively been a non-persecuted religion in the West ever since. He goes, we are back where we were in the old days, where it's hard to be a Christian, and obviously sometimes fatal to be a Christian. Very difficult for the Western Christian mind to get its head around that type of culture. Uh, but it needs to be done. We've had some small successes here, small successes, but we had a chance at the end of last year's conference to meet with the Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis. Um, and though I don't speak much Italian, I speak enough to know what he said to us, which is, I appreciate the fact that you're here. I know what you believe as Catholic lawmakers. What are you doing about it? Um, we passed a genocide resolution in the House last year as a direct result of that meeting. We think it had influence in the State Department. Um, but it is far, far, far from enough because it has not saved a single person yet. Um, so we will continue to press the issue um, on the treatment of Christians overseas and in the Middle East specifically. Uh, there's actually a piece of legislation right now that would give Christians priority um, in refugee and um, immigration status. House has not taken it up yet. We're pressing for that before the end of this year. So um, I guess in the end of my three to five minutes, this is what I'll say. Um, we are more aware of it than I thought we would ever be. In fact, I wasn't even aware that this was going on until I started going to this conference. Uh, and there's a small group of men and women here who are dedicated to getting the message out to our colleagues so that we can try and do a little better. Not sure if that's what you wanted to hear. Not sure if that's good or bad to speak under the circumstances, but that's my story. Um, and we'll continue to do everything we can uh, from the comfort of uh, a non-persecuted religion. Thank you all very much. <laughs>